Greetings, YouTube. The doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons. And welcome to the channel that brings power gaming to the next level. Today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis, we are talking about the 8th level spell Antipathy Sympathy. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I've got another video out. All right. Let's get into it. Antipathy, sympathy. We're giving it a C plus. It is usable by druids and wizards. How rando is that? Druids and wizards. Again, bards can pick this up at some point with magical secrets. So it's an eighth level spell. It has a casting time of one whop an hour, which means it's probably not going to be very useful in combat. Maybe for players in near combat situations, that is situations where you are pretty sure you're going to be in combat but again most classes only get one slot so you really got to choose these carefully is this the one that you're going to want to choose so maybe a day ahead you know you're going to be in combat so you prepare this spell and then you cast it and then you you know rest and then you get uh, the rest of your spells back it's got a range of 60 feet. It can fit in an area no longer than 200 foot cube. Verbal, somatic, and material component. And we don't care about the material component because it is worthless. And it lasts for 10 days, no concentration. So this spell attracts or repels creatures. So you can target something within range, either huge or smaller uh, object or creature, or an area that is no larger than 200 foot cube. Then specify an intelligent, cre intelligent creature. And then I give these examples, and these examples are pretty specific. So you can't, in my interpretation of this, from these examples, is it says red dragons, goblins, or vampires. So you can't say dragons because it specifies red dragons. You can't say humanoids because it specifies a kind of humanoid, goblins. You can't say undead because it specifies a kind of undead vampires. You can say humans. You can say elves. You can say dwarves. So those are, those are examples of things that you can say. So you invest the target with an aura that either attracts or repels. You choose antipathy or sympathy. So antipathy, the enchantment, causes creatures of the kind. You designated to feel an intense urge to leave the area and to avoid the target. When such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it, the creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened, the frightened creature, while it, while it can see the target or is within 60 feet. So I'm going to point something out here that's very important. Second sentence, when such a creature, say we said elves, when an elf can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it, the elf must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. So it's either they see it or they come within 60 feet of it. It being an object, a creature, or an area. An air, or an area that is no larger than 200 foot cubed. I like putting this on objects. Okay. It's frightened. While, the frightened, while frightened by the target, the creature must use its movement to move to the nearest safe spot from which it cannot see the target. If the creature moves more than 60 feet from the target and cannot see it, and cannot see it, the creature is no longer frightened. So if it's with if it's more than 60 feet of it and it can see it, then it's still going to be frightened. Creature is no longer frightened, but the creature becomes frightened again if it regains sight of the target or moves within 60 feet. But there's a caveat to that. Okay, so sympathy. The enchantment causes a specified creature, let's say elf, elves, to feel an intense urge to approach the target while within 60 feet of it or able to see it. So if they can see it from farther than 60 feet away, then this, this spell triggers. When such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it, the creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or use its movement on each of its turns to enter the area or move within reach of the target. That means adjacent to it. It doesn't say they have to touch it. 
They just have to come within reach of it. So when the creature has done so, it cannot willingly move away from the target. If the target damages or otherwise harms an affected creature, the affected creature can make a wisdom saving throw to end the effect as described below. If the target damages or otherwise harms. So the target doesn't miss that there could be other things there that could do that, and that's not going to trigger a saving throw. So ending the effect. If an affected creature ends its turn while not within 60 feet of the target or able to see it. So that's a little different. So if you've got something that's 30 feet from the target and has a darkness spell cast on it, which means it can't see the target anymore, then it gets a wisdom saving throw. On a successful save, the creature can no, is no longer affected by the target and recognizes the feeling of repugnance or attraction is magical. In addition, a creature affected by the spell is allowed another wisdom saving throw every 24 hours, and a creature that successfully saves against this effect is immune for one minute, after which time it can be affected again. Okay, so let's kind of unpack this a little bit, and let's go over the pros and cons. So some of the pros I have here are it can affect an object or a creature. Let's say it can affect an object that's huge size or smaller. So that's good. And if you see it or come within 60 feet of it, so it doesn't matter that you can see it or not with uh, sympathy. Sympathy says while within 60 feet of it or able to see it. So if you're blind and you are within 60 feet of the object or creature, you're making that save. When such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it. There's a big, big or statement in there. So you can affect creatures of a huge size or smaller. You can affect an area of 200 feet or smaller cubed. So that means that if an affected creature ends its turn while not within 60 feet of the target. So 60 feet of the area that's my guess um so so that's what we have to you just substitute area for target so when such a creature let's say elf when such an elf can see the area or comes within 60 feet of the area the creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw so that area one's a pretty good one too it's it's pretty general but it's specific at the same time uh, for what it can affect. So I've got elves written down. You can do dwarves. You can do orcs. You can do vampires, whatever. Um, it does last for a long time, which is 10 days, but it is not permanent. Uh, I do like that it's a wisdom saving throw, and I do like the fact that it's a very limited wisdom saving throw. So if you're in it, you're, you're doing a wisdom saving throw. Um, particularly sympathy. With sy I like the sympathy better than I like the antipathy, but the antipathy can be used um, in different ways. So um, it's a wisdom saving throw, and then it's it's very limited. And, and at this level, that wisdom saving throw can be pretty high. Um, I like both. I like sympathy better. Uh, and just remember, it's see or enter is the trigger. The trigger is when such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it. So the target being object, creature, area. Okay. Some cons. It takes one hour to cast this. So you're not going to be casting this in combat. And in addition to that, most, creature, most casters only have, that is druids and wizards, only have one eighth level slot. Which means you need plenty of uh, foreshadowing time to be able to cast this spell. If you know, as a player, if you know you're going to be in a combat in, say, the next week or three days or two days, then this is probably pretty good. You can drop this down in a place uh, where you know you're going to be running an ambush, and then you can rest again and get your spells back. You got that simulacrum. Don't forget the simulacrum for those wizards. You can have the simulacrum cast this, too. Uh, I don't like that it only lasts 10 days. I like it, and I don't like it. So it only lasts 10 days, but it only lasts 10 days because it's not permanent. And I wish I wish that there was a way to make this a permanent effect. Wish can do a lot of things. Um, once it's out of the area 
or not able to see the object. So if and if so, end in the effect. If if an affected creature ends its turn while not within 60 feet of the target, being object, creature, or area, or able to see it. So if you cannot see it, the target, area, object, or creature, the creature gets a wisdom saving throw. So that does limit things, but the saving throw should be pretty hard to do. And again, you can make a creature blind in various ways, and they will immediately get a saving throw. So one, I think a couple of uses for this. Uh, this is definitely more of a DM spell than it is a player spell. Players need lots of prep time uh, to do this properly, whereas the DM, can you, you, can, you can use this in combination with traps. It's pretty good with combination of traps. So um, you can place a proximity trap, like a glyph of warding, around an object, and then when creature say say dwarves see the object then they're going to rush to the object to be adjacent to it and you have a bunch of proximity glyphs of warding that are there that will go off now the glyphs of warding are harming the creature but the uh the the target is not damaging or harming the creature so so it will not turn off or trigger another saving throw and with that's with sympathy and with antipathy you can ward an object from specific kinds of creatures and possibly you have an object that can only be used by dwarves and now there is an antipathy on it against dwarves to protect the object again a dm spell um you know but you could have the party is knows that they're going they're they're setting up an ambush they know they're going to be attacked by ghouls and they throw this down or they they know they're getting attacked by a specific red dragon and so you could cast this on a creature now it doesn't say that that creature can't move around the spell is on a creature and it will go with that creature wherever they go and any uh, red dragon that can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it has to make that wisdom saving throw over. It's frightened and then it has to run. And then it'll get a new one when it gets out of the area or, can, or cannot see it again. So there is that. All right. That is what I have for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in and I will catch everybody later.